Hello everyone! Uh, my name is Wesley, this is Wu Can Cook. Uh, today we're doing a kind of an unusual stream. Actually, we've been doing many of these lately. Uh, it's a series that we call Wu Can Cook, whatever you tell me to. Uh, today we're essentially, what we did was we posted a poll over on the YouTube channel a couple of days ago. I think that was back on Tuesday. Uh, and I took a poll of everything that's in my refrigerator and today we're going to cook a recipe that's basically whatever you voted on. So. Uh, I picked the top five things that everyone voted on, and then we're going to throw it into a fried rice. Essentially, more or less a fried rice. Uh, so what we're going to be using today are a variety of things. Mostly, there are what we have are leftovers from the uh, uh, pop-up food stall that we did last weekend, which is a huge amount, like a huge amount of rice. Uh, so we're going to be using up some leftover rice from that. Uh, but also a, cu a couple other things that are just going to kind of going bad in my refrigerator. Uh, and we're going to see what we come up with. Mainly what we're going to be doing is drawing some inspiration from a pineapple and spam fried rice that I had done a recipe for a little while ago. I think that was back in uh, maybe in like September or so of last year. So almost more than a year ago now. Um, so that always lives over on the YouTube channel. So if you're also looking for those polls, they also live over on YouTube. Uh, so if you're interested in being a part of the weird things that we vote on, definitely take a look at that. Essentially what it is is a poll of everything that's in my refrigerator. Uh, and then we sort of cobble together something edible based off of whatever you tell me to put into it. So uh, sometimes, most, lots of times those end up being relatively coherent because there's a lot of like coherent stuff in my refrigerator that actually belongs in a wok fry. Uh, but lots of times those end up being interesting things like... There's orange juice in my refrigerator, and we threw orange juice into a ramen once, and it actually worked out okay. Uh, so, that's uh, a fun one. Uh, as with many recipes uh, that we do, I'm starting off, this is uh, some garlic and ginger. Right now, I'm going to be fine mincing some ginger here. This is about a tablespoon's worth. Might not actually be enough ginger, but we'll find out. Uh, this, so, this is about a tablespoon's worth of ginger. We're going to do a fine mint on first. So, uh, as with our ginger... Uh, as always, we're going to do slices down the middle, slices down the center, uh, and then run our knife through it for our fine mints, like so. Uh, and I, as I always recommend, if you don't like doing mincing, uh, or if you don't like chopping in general, you can also put this stuff through a microplane too. Um, you tend to need a pretty sharp microplane. Um, the main reason why I don't microplane my ginger is because I don't like cleaning my microplane, so. Uh, but if you don't mind it, or if you have a dishwasher, or if you have someone to do your dishes for you. Uh, that's a great shortcut. But also, you should just learn how to do fine minces. They're not that difficult. So, that's our ginger. Uh, then we're going to set that aside. That's going to get into our wok very first. So this is going to be the first uh, thing that gets into our wok. Right? And then the second thing, which I was chopping earlier, and then I actually finished chopping before I started talking, uh, was two cloves of garlic. But actually what we did today is we actually didn't crush them. They're just, these are just thinly sliced, uh, which you can kind of see, kind of not see. Uh, that's our garlic. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to throw this in at the very, very end. We're actually going to throw it into an empty wok uh, and then crisp them up. And then we're going to throw it on top. It's going to be like a crispy garlic garnish. Uh, and it's going to work super well. Uh, what is interesting about garlic though is that uh, you don't really get a lot of flavor out of it if you don't crush it. So the only way that you'll, you're actually going to taste uh, that garlic, if it's not crushed, unless you eat a lot of it, the only way that you're really going to get any flavor out of it uh, is if you bite into it. So one of the only situations where I don't crush my garlic uh, is right now when we use it as a really large garnish, uh, which means that it has to be chopped really, really large uh, if we want it to be have any sort of presence whatsoever. So uh, that's what we're doing. We're chopping it really large. Uh, next up, this is some green onions. So what we're doing, uh, so you'll notice that our green onions today uh, are looking a little bit sketchy because they're a little bit old, you can see. Uh, they, wh what happens when green onions get really old, especially when they're like start to uh, wilt, uh, is the tips of it start to wilt. So the greens of your green onions, they go first. So this end right here, uh, this is just wilting. You can pull it off and it will still be fine. Um, what will also happen as it start, starts wilting, or eventually once it finishes wilting, uh, is it will just start sprouting more green. So like this tip right here. Um, so this is like growing a new green onion. Uh, you could technically eat it. I like to pick it off if it gets like too long. Uh, because when it gets really, really thin and you start to try to eat it, it can be a little bit bitter because it's like the youngest part of the green onion. 
Uh, so I like to pick it off, but if you don't mind it, you can just, just leave that stuff on. Uh, otherwise, though, we're just picking off all of the uh, errant, dried, and like gross bits. Uh, and we should be ready to go. Uh, what I'm going to do is, though, we're going to slice these into garnish. So I'm going to use the whole thing today as garnish. But uh, what's important to note about any time that we're working with green onions, but especially if we're not going to cook it, uh, is that they have two different qualities about them. So the whites of our green onions like this uh, are pretty durable. Um, they have like uh, a pretty dense texture to it, uh, which means that just like any other onion, if you were to bite into it, uh, it's going to be pretty harsh um, because it's essentially a raw onion, which is not what we're after. Um, so in order to sort of take off some of that bite, uh, I'm going to slice these whites really, really thin or as thin as I can. Uh, and that's going to just sort of like alleviate some of that like real harsh qualities that you get from uh, biting into a raw green onion. Uh, very often you will also see me throw this in with the wok fry, so it will go into the fry itself. Uh, and then we'll actually cook the green onions. I'm not going to do that today, mostly because I just want to use all of these as garnish, but uh, it's also another great option too. So those are our whites, and then what we're going to do for our greens, we're also going to use these as a garnish as well. Uh, but we can chop them slightly differently because they're not as uh, harsh as the whites. So what I'm going to do uh, for our greens is I'm going to slice this uh, also very thin, but on a bias this time. So uh, I have the knife, it's angled slightly, you can see it on the cutting board, it's slightly biased. Uh, and that's going to give us these lar like very large diagonal cuts. Uh, which make, means that the white, the greens of our green onions, since they're going to be cut on a bias, uh, is going to hold a little bit more physical space, which is going to be nice uh, because it will help keep the greens from getting like lost in the texture. Uh, so I like to do this anytime that I'm working with like the leafy portions of our green onions, uh, just because it has like a little bit more uh, physical presence when we bite into it. Like so, uh, and then since we're using this all as garnish, we can just toss it all together. Uh, and that's our green onion. <coughs> Me, yeah, miso soup. Yeah, that's a miso soup. That's like one of the, other than the miso, the, the like big primary ingredient that goes into miso soup. Well, there's a lot of things. Uh, but it's the green onions that's like uh, the big presence. Also, tofu, very important. Yeah, on my to-do list is miso soup. I think miso soup is a real simple one where it's like easy to do a very mediocre miso soup. Uh, but if you really want to do a miso soup properly, you're going to have to figure out how to make dashi stock. Uh, and dashi stock is a lot more complicated. I just, wrong. Uh, dashi stock is a lot more complicated than it uh, comes off as, because you can definitely buy that stuff like uh, pre-made. You could buy a powder just like chicken stock uh, and it will be fine, but it's not going to be nearly as, uh, as effective as if you were to make that dashi stock yourself. Uh, in which case you would have to go out and get like get some kombu and then like figure out how to like really really make a nice dashi stock so that's the stuff uh, when i'm like trying to figure out recipes uh, lots of folks ask why i don't do a lot of like soups so a lot of ramen um a lot of, like uh, uh all yeah all of the ramens all of the neuro mins all of those soups pho all of those things are a they're a little bit tricky because you have to figure out how to make those stocks which are like um not not a simple process for sure so uh so what i'm chopping up right now is my bell pepper so i was a little bit distracted and not paying attention about how i just chopped this uh, but what i wanted to do was do a very very small dice so today what we're working with uh, one of the other vegetables that we're going to be using today are some carrots but because these are all leftovers from the food pop-up that we already did uh, last weekend a lot of these things are already chopped so my carrots are already diced they look like this uh, that's gonna work okay for our fried rice because they're actually meant to go in a fried rice so we have these nice uh, large like medium diced carrots uh, that's gonna go really great into our uh, fried rice but what that does mean is that if we're gonna add another kind of vegetable like these bell peppers uh, we want them to be generally in the same size so uh, normally when I work with a bell pepper, I, very often you will see me slicing it probably in a large dice, probably something similar to this size. Uh, that's not going to work out really well if we're going to add it to the wok fry uh, with those carrots because it's going to be like a weird shape. You're going to have inconsistent bites, so you don't want that. So to get uh, our, 
uh, the, to get the bite of our fried rice a little bit more consistent, we want to pay attention to how we chop it. So we want it uh, probably a little bit smaller, something like this, so that it matches the dice of our carrots. So they're going to be in the same size. Uh, that's real important because uh, it's going to help us get like a consistent bite. So I'm going to give these a little bit more attention than when I first started chopping them. Uh, and I'm going to go for a relatively small dice here. Yeah. Cool. Hello. Hello everyone just tuning in. My name is Wesley. This is Boo Can Cook. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, we're here every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 6.30 PST. Uh, with new recipes out over on my YouTube channel every Friday. So uh, today we're doing a series where we I basically took a poll of everything uh, that's in my, not everything, but almost everything that's in my refrigerator. I posted all of that all of those ingredients over on my YouTube channel. Uh, and I asked folks to take, uh, take some votes off on uh, what you want to see me throw into a wok fry. Uh, and I think what most of the most of the stuff that folks voted on uh, were really just the stuff that was about to go bad. So that's what we're throwing into our wok fry right now, or all of the vegetables that we're about to, about to spoil. So these these bell peppers that we're throwing in right now, uh, those green onions, some of that garlic was about to spoil. Uh, all of these are things that were probably if we left them until Monday, they probably would have gone bad by then. So uh, I'm glad that people voted for uh, food conservation. Uh, so yeah, if you want to check some of that stuff out, definitely find your way over to the YouTube channel. Uh, all of those posts, they're posted over on the community tab, so lots of fun content co coming up over there. Uh, in addition to the polls, that's also where the recipes live, so if you're trying to find out uh, how to cook many of the things that I uh, cook on live stream, that's where all of those recipes will live. Uh, the fried rice recipe that we're following along with right now is uh, loosely inspired by a fried rice recipe that I had done, or Hawaiian fried rice that I had done. Uh, a couple of months ago uh, that leans very heavily on the use of spam which is what we're going to be using today uh, that recipe it has a couple other things in it that uh, we're not going to be using um, but we are borrowing pretty heavily from that recipe yeah. uh, so if you're looking for that stuff definitely find your way over to the youtube channel friday uh, this friday coming up so as in tomorrow uh, is a recipe for tomato beef chow mein. That's what we're doing. That's going to be real fun. I should have a TV show. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, yeah, just waiting for someone to give me a TV show. That would be super fun. That would be weird. Cool. All right, so this is our bell pepper. So today we're, we're using up today is our yellow bell pepper. There's also an orange bell pepper in my refrigerator. Uh, the main reason that we're using up the yellow bell pepper uh, is because it's going to give us a nice pop of color. Uh, it's going to look a little bit uh, nice next to our orange carrots uh, and our green onions. So we'll have this very nice colorful dish uh, that we'll finish up with presentation. You eat with your eyes. Don't forget. All right. Um, let's do this. Uh, next up, I'm going to whisk up some eggs here. So I've discovered that it's relatively optional to whisk the eggs. Uh, you can totally just throw the eggs straight into the wok, which I have done many times uh, when I'm feeling lazy. Uh, the one advantage of whisking your eggs off of heat before it gets into your wok uh, is that you can add other things to it, which will give it some nice flavor. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to add a two things uh, that I find are very, very useful to add to eggs when we're we'll wok frying them. The first is going to be about a tablespoon of Shaoxing wine, uh, which is a little bit of Chinese milk. Uh, and that's just going to give it a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of brightness. Uh, the second is going to be a pinch of kosher salt. Kosher salt, relatively self-explanatory, uh, but what's really useful about salt in eggs is that it kind of starts uh, it causes the membrane of the egg to start separating a little bit, uh, which is going to help us whisk them up a little bit better. Uh, and then the very last thing that's going into our eggs today, that was about half a teaspoon of cornstarch. Uh, lots of people ask why I add cornstarch to eggs so often. 
Um, well, it's not it's not to make them thicker or anything like that. It doesn't really do much in terms of texture. Uh, essentially, what it's doing is it's going to slow down the cooking time of our eggs just a little bit, so just long enough uh, to the point where it won't start turning rubbery. So it will uh, give us a little bit more time in the wok so that we can uh, finish cooking them. So they'll set, and once they'll start setting, uh, if we don't have that cornstarch in there very often times, by the time that they, those eggs start setting, they'll start turning rubbery too, which is not super fun. Uh, so that's going to slow down our cook time just long enough so that we can get those eggs to set. Uh, last up is going to be our sauce today. Uh, I'm going to keep it relatively simple with our sauce elements today, uh, mostly because I'm trying to follow along with the things that people ask me to put into the recipe. Uh, but starting off, this is going to be four tablespoons of soy sauce. Uh, next up is going to be two tablespoons of hoisin sauce. Uh, I love using hoisin sauce in recipes or fried rice recipes when I'm trying to keep them relatively like um, leaning towards American qualities because they're a little bit, uh, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it. I kind of think of it as like the ketchup of Chinese food. Uh, next up, that was a single tablespoon of sesame oil. Uh, and then this is going to be a single tablespoon of gochujang. Uh, gochujang comes from Korean cuisine. It comes from the fermentation of a chili. Uh, and it's also very spicy and very sweet, so that is going to give us a nice uh, nice bit of umami that's going to come from that. Uh, and then the very last thing that we're going to add today is going to be... Uh, this is going to be a single tablespoon of lao ganma, or chili crisp oil. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, chili crisp oil or lao ganma uh, is essentially uh, chili flakes that have been like fermented and like cooked at very very low heat in a lot of oil. So what happens when that uh, when you do that to chili chilies uh, is they start releasing a lot of capsaicin. So it has this really really nice but really really mellow heat to it. Um, so I, I I love pairing it with things like gochujang or dobanjang or other like very very aggressive heat uh, elements uh, because it kind of just helps that the uh, heat of your sauce just sort of disperse really nicely. You, oh, is soy sauce too salty? You always mess with the, uh, with with your food and soy sauce. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a great point. So uh, lots of people ask about the soy sauce, um, and that's actually a really good point because uh, essentially what I just did was added a quarter cup of salt, uh, soy sauce, uh, which is a lot. Four tablespoons of soy sauce is quite a bit. Um, what I like to do whenever, almost any time that you see me using soy sauce, uh, I'm probably going to be using low sodium soy sauce. So that's what we're using today too, uh, is low sodium soy sauce. Uh, it's not for any particular reason, not for, definitely not for health reasons. Low sodium soy sauce doesn't keep you healthy. Uh, all, it really, all, all low sodium soy sauce means is that it has less salt in it. Uh, so that's really useful in, like, in a lot of cases like what we're doing today uh, because uh, if it has less salt in it, then it means that you can meet, use more of it without being like over seasoning too much. So if we didn't have low sodium soy sauce very often, I would probably uh, instead find myself using half. I would have to half it and I would probably use two tablespoons instead. Um, having that low sodium soy sauce though, it's really useful because we can course correct afterward. Uh, so it's, I kind of think of it as like using the... Uh, it's like sort of the equivalent of using kosher salt, so you can use more of it without being too conscious of about like how much you're using. So uh, if you add add that soy sauce and then you go back and say, oh, it needs more salt, then you can add salt back to it. But if uh, you use full sodium soy sauce and it's, it's too salty, not much you can do after that. It's just too salty. So uh, so yeah, if you have a, if you have a problem with every time that you use soy sauce, it comes out too salty. That's a good solution. It's just a I uh, use some low sodium stuff and it will help quite a bit. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so a couple other things that I didn't chop up so we could take a look. Uh, there's a couple things that are already prepped because these are all coming from the food booth that we did last weekend. Uh, this is some fresh limes that were already chopped up. Uh, and then the other thing is a bunch of spam. So this is some already diced spam. 
Uh, if you've never had Spam, it comes in a can. It's like a kind of a lowbrow, uh, pantry-friendly meat. You'll usually see it with like uh, breakfasts a lot. Kind of looks like this. Uh, spam, I love using Spam anytime that I'm trying to cook in like the Hawaiian cuisine uh, because it comes up in Hawaiian food all the time. Uh, so what we're doing today is drawing a lot of inspiration from the Hawaiian fried rice recipe that I had done a little while ago. Um, spam is an already cooked meat. Before it gets canned, it's already cooked. Uh, so we're not too worried about uh, working with raw meat because we're actually not using any raw meat today. Uh, what I am going to do though is bolster it with a little bit of bacon fat, which I also have uh, in huge quantities. <laughs> I have huge amounts of bacon fat. Uh, so this is literally just a jar full of bacon fat. Um, which, if you've never saved your bacon fat before, do not throw that stuff away. It's very, very useful. So what we're going to do uh, today is we're going to cook our fried rice. We're going to cook all the way to the end. Uh, then we're going to pull it out of the wok uh, and then add that bacon fat back to the wok. Uh, and then add our fried rice on top of it and then sear it in that bacon fat. And that's going to give us this nice crispy texture uh, that comes from another fried rice recipe that I had written called a crispy bacon fried rice, which essentially what we're doing uh, is just leaving it in the wok undisturbed for about two minutes. Uh, and basically what happens when you start searing fried rice is it basically just starts burning. Uh, and when it starts burning, you get this nice crisp quality to the parts that are still touching the wok. So we get this nice little crisp, uh, crispy bits of rice that sort of float around in the wok fry. All right, oops, there we go. So I've got my wok over on the stove. I'm gonna get that thing preheated and then we're gonna start cooking. Yeah. What's on the, oh here. You can smell it through the screen. Yeah, I can smell it too. What's on, the, what's on the, oh, what's on the turntable? Yeah, what's spin? I actually don't know what's spinning. I, I can't hear, hear any of the music that's playing because uh, I don't have earbuds. Uh, but it's most of it, uh, everything that's spinning, it's, it lives over on the, the Wu Cooks Beats and Music channel, so you can find that over here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Hello to everyone just tuning in. My name is Wesley. This is Wu Can Cook. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, we're here every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 6.30 PST uh, with new recipes coming out over on my YouTube channel every Friday. So if you haven't checked out the YouTube channel yet, uh, that's where this laptop behind me is going. Uh, that's where we have a separate concurrent live stream that goes straight to YouTube. Uh, on the YouTube channel, that's also where I keep the uh, schedule of live streams too. So if you're trying to find out what I'm going to be cooking next, uh, everyone who was watching over on YouTube would have known a couple of weeks ago that I'd be doing this stream. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, that's also where all the recipes come out too, though. So every Friday we've got a new recipe that comes out. Uh, last Friday was a recipe for a sesame mochi rice ball. So uh, it's a, it comes from Chinese dim sum. It's called a jian dui, uh, and it's made from glutinous rice. So the most like similar thing to think of would be mochi, uh, and it's essentially deep, a deep fried mochi ball, which is one of my favorite desserts from when I was a kid. So. Uh, lots of recipes like that coming up every Friday. So this coming Friday, as in tomorrow. Uh, we'll be, we're doing a tomato beef chow mein, which is going to be one of my, it's actually one of my mom's favorite dishes. Uh, when I was a kid, I didn't like it because why would you want to put tomatoes in a wok fry? But I actually thought it came out really good. So, <laughs> so if you're interested in stuff like that, we're working our way to 4,500 subs by the end of the month. So please do hop over to the YouTube and check it out. Only if you're interested though. Don't go if you're not interested. All right, so I've got my wok, it's nice and hot. And we're gonna add our, that's about four tablespoons of peanut oil. Uh, and then we're gonna give our wok a long yao, which is essentially coating that uh, wok in all of that hot oil. Uh, and then I'm gonna add my spam in first. So this is very important and also slightly different from how most recipes or how most wok fries will go uh, that you'll see me do. Usually we would start things off uh, by adding uh, our garlic and ginger first. And the reason that we do that is because we're trying to bloom out the aromatic qualities of those garlic and ginger. Uh, we didn't do that today because spam takes a really long time to brown. Uh, and if we add, usually it's okay because the, the thing that follows garlic and ginger is very often something like ground meat. Uh, ground pork, something like that, something that's only going to take maybe a minute or two to cook. Uh, spam, however, because we're actually not cooking it, we're just trying to brown it. It takes a really long time to brown, so I have started adding the spam in very, very first. 
uh, and getting that spam to start browning before we start moving on from there. Uh, otherwise, you're probably either gonna end up with undercooked spam, so it's gonna be like pale and gray, which is not fun. Or you might have burnt garlic and ginger, which is also not fun either. So, uh, just in order to make sure that we time these ingredients out properly, I'm adding the spam in very first. And we're gonna let that brown up first. Mama, yeah. I still don't know how to pronounce your username. Insomniac checking in though. How's it going? I think it's probably like, I think you said it's like 2 a.m. over there or 1.30 in the morning right now. Thank you for tuning in though. That's great. All right. So we're going to let that spam go. It probably will need about like a two minute head start before we add everything else in. Uh, and then from there, we're going to start moving backwards. So we're going to add our garlic and ginger. Uh, and then we'll probably need to get our carrots in from there. Um, but we're all, all of these things are going to start moving backward from that point. Yeah. So like I mentioned earlier, the spam, spam when it comes out of the can, it's or when spam goes into the can, actually, uh, it's already cooked. The, that meat is already cured and cooked before it gets canned. So we're not actually trying to cook to a certain point of doneness. Uh, when you're working with something like spam, it's already cooked. Uh, what we're really just going after is browning and color at this point. So I'm less concerned about making sure that things are cooked through, more concerned about making sure that we have like uh, some ni a nice mired reaction with that spam, which is essentially getting a crisp brown exterior to it. Yeah. Holy crap, it's almost 3 in the morning over there. Yeah, that's really late. Definitely in insomnia. Wherever you are. Cool. You can almost smell it. Yeah, I can smell it for sure. Cool. So if you notice, so one of the big things that I always think about when I, especially with things like fried rice, uh, because fried rice has so many ingredients in it, uh, is when uh, oftentimes when I'm working with something like a fried rice, I'll notice that the wok isn't getting quite hot enough, uh, which is actually what's happening right now. So you'll notice uh, that we're having a little bit of trouble browning that rice. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm going to stop moving it. That's a very, very important part of wok cooking, especially a wok cooking on a home range. Uh, but this is actually true on wok cooking in a wok burner too, uh, is that if you notice that it doesn't have enough heat, uh, it probably means that you're tossing it too much like this, uh, because that agitation is causing the wok's heat and the wok's temperature to start dropping, which is not going to be uh, helpful. It's actually going to start harming you in the long run. Uh, so if you notice that that's happening, it means that you're moving the wok too much. Uh, so just stop touching it. Give it, a, give it maybe 30 seconds to start recuperating. Uh, let some of that heat come back and then start agitating it again and that will help you uh, get back up to nice hot temperatures. Yeah. Uh, that's especially useful if you're, if you're doing what we're doing right now which is essentially browning because if uh, you notice that the spam for example isn't browning quite as well as it should be, uh, that's because you're probably agitating the pan too much. Yeah. Salvador, some, yeah, thank you. I'm excited to eat it. Cool, that's almost there. I'm gonna let that brown just a little bit longer and then we're gonna move on from there. Uh, one of my favorite parts about working with Spam is that it gets this really nice dark brown color uh, without actually burning because it has so much fat in it because it's made from pork fat. Um, so that's one of my favorite properties about Spam. Uh, is that you don't have to do very much work to get it to brown like that. Uh, if we were working with other things like chicken breast or chicken thigh or even some kinds of steak, uh, you got to do a little bit more work to make sure that it properly sears. So if we were doing the same thing with chicken, uh, we would not be getting that level of browning because uh, we wouldn't have the same amount of fat in it. Yeah. Good, thank you. Thank you for asking. I'm doing well. How is everyone else doing? Cool, that's nearly there. I'm gonna give that maybe another like, maybe 30, 45 seconds. 
uh, give it a little bit more browning, and then we're going to move on from there. Uh, and essentially what we're going to do is work backwards from there. So we're going to add our garlic, ginger, and the whites of our green onions back. Uh, and then we're, we're going to add from there, uh, we'll probably we'll add our carrots in, and then we're going to start backtracking from there uh, and sort of start assembling a fried rice after that point. Uh, but uh, unlike a lot of the other wok fries that we usually do, uh, normally you would see me add that garlic and ginger before the protein, like spam. Uh, the reason that we haven't added that stuff yet is because if there was garlic and ginger in the wok at this point, uh, it would absolutely have started burning by this point uh, because Spam takes a little bit longer than other proteins to start browning up. Uh, so I'm giving that Spam a little bit of a head start uh, just to make sure that it gets a proper browning. Uh, but since we don't have that garlic and ginger in the wok yet, we are going to need to do something a little bit different and that comes from street cooking. So what I'm essentially going to do uh, is push everything to one side of the wok. Uh, and this is very, very useful to have a large wok at this point uh, in order to do this. Uh, and then I'm going to add my garlic and ginger. Uh, and really what I'm after is I'm just trying to make sure that that garlic and ginger uh, is making good solid contact with the hot oil. So it's got to be in that hot oil. Uh, if it's not in the oil, uh, then it's probably not going to bloom out any aromatic qualities. So we're looking for that garlic and ginger to become fragrant. Uh, if it doesn't make contact with that oil, it's not going to become fragrant. Uh, and you're going to miss out on a lot of the, quali the qualities of flavor and the aromatic flavor. Uh, that comes from that garlic and ginger. So the reason that we're pushing everything over here uh, is to make sure that all of this garlic and ginger is getting into this hot oil nicely. Uh, and then once it's fragrant, we can start combining it uh, and move on from there. So what I usually say is that should take about 10, 15 seconds, but I always tell folks, uh, use your nose at that point. When you start smelling garlic and ginger, that's when you know you're ready to move on. Uh, next up is my carrots, uh, followed by my bell pepper. Uh, and that, those carrots, because, especially the carrots and bell peppers, they're a little bit more durable of vegetables to, to, to be working with. Uh, so I'm going to need to let that go in the wok for a little bit longer than we normally would, probably about a full minute or two. Uh, that's just going to really help us start breaking down the denseness of that carrot. Uh, otherwise, when we pull it out of the wok fry, uh, you're going to have like really, really crunchy, almost probably like borderline raw carrots. Uh, which we don't want. So we need those carrots to have a little bit of extra time in that wok in order for them to cook through. Yeah. Grinderman, what are we making? Yeah, today... <laughs> great question. Hello to everyone just tuning in. Hey, there's Ham Charo. Uh, hello to everyone just tuning in. Today we're making a wok fried rice that's roughly inspired by a Hawaiian fried rice that I had written, a uh, recipe that I had written a little while back. Um, what we're actually doing is I took a poll over on my YouTube channel of the top 20 things that were in my refrigerator uh, and then I'm essentially throwing the top five things that people voted for uh, into a fried rice. This is more or less what it is. Uh, so there was a bunch of leftover stuff uh, that came from a food booth pop-up that we did last weekend. So. Uh, all of the leftover, the leftover things that we're throwing in were a bunch of leftover carrots, a bunch of leftover spam, and a ha whole bunch of leftover rice. So there's like five pounds of cooked rice in my refrigerator right now, which is a crazy amount of leftover rice. So uh, I'm glad that we're making fried rice because I can finally use up some of that rice. So. That, by the way, was ham charo. Ham charo is the ram hamster in ramen. Ham charo only gets to eat when you feed him. Uh, which only happens when you subscribe to the YouTube channel. So if you haven't yet, uh, please subscribe and feed Ham Charo. He's very hungry. We're working our way to 4,500 subs by the end of the month too. So if you want to help us hit our subscriber goal, 
uh, please hop over and give it a subscribe. Yeah, this is coming along nicely. Looks good. Yeah, thank you. Hey, there's Ham Charo. Ham Charo is my favorite hamster eating ramen. For a while, he wasn't working. I'm glad that we fixed Ham Charo. Alright. So next what we're going to do is just like we did when we added the garlic and ginger, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So this is a technique that comes from street food cooking. Uh, so we're going to push everything in the wok again to one side. Uh, and once again, we're going to do the same thing with our eggs uh, with a little bit more oil too. So the reason that we're doing this with the eggs is because we want to make sure, just like we did uh, with the garlic and ginger, is that we want to make sure that the eggs make solid contact with the wok bottom as well. Uh, if, they, if we were to put the eggs on top of the vegetables, uh, then we would get like a nice egg coating co covering the egg, the vegetables, which is also fine. But what we're really after in a fried rice are these big curds of eggs, sort of, sort of like scrambled eggs in a fried rice. Um, so in order to do that, it's got to be making contact with the wok the, uh, the wok surface, uh, otherwise we're just going to coat everything in egg, which is not uh, what we're after. So in order to achieve those curds of egg, uh, I'm moving everything to one side and then just giving it a nice toss, like so. Uh, you'll also notice that cornstarch that we added to the eggs are play coming into play nicely. Uh, it's basically keeping the eggs from turning rubbery at this point. If we were uh, without that cornstarch, these eggs would be overcooked at that point by now. So once we have nice curds of scrambled egg, I'm going to let everything combine. Uh, and you'll notice that those eggs are staying nice and independent. So we have these nice large curds of eggs sitting around. So at this point, if you want it, you could stop, and that's basically a scramble, an egg scramble. Uh, and that would work too. You could totally just do this right now. Uh, but what we're going to do instead is add a bunch of fried, a bunch of leftover rice. Uh, if, you've never, if you've never seen me talk about fried rice before, uh, one of the most important aspects to a fried rice is that it has to be, by requirement, must be made with leftover rice. So you can't make fried rice uh, with fresh rice because what will happen uh, if we were to throw like fresh, uh, very fluffy rice into a wok fry uh, for a fried rice is that we would also be introducing a lot of liquid. Uh, so a lot of moisture would be coming in with that rice, uh, which is nice. That's, that's nice when we're eating rice uh, as like a side to a stir fry. But if we're making a fried rice and you introduce that much moisture, uh, what will happen is you get a very, very soggy fried rice. So uh, in order to avoid that sogginess, uh, the rice has to be left over, so it has to be dried out. So. Uh, today we happen to have a lot of leftover fried rice, but uh, when I don't have leftover fried rice, usually what I'll do is I'll make rice in the morning, uh, and then I'll let it sit out for a couple of hours, so probably like three four hours. Uh, at the minimum, at the very least, a minimum of an hour or two uh, to air dry, and just sort of like uh, dry off a lot of that moisture that comes when you finish cooking fresh rice. Yeah. Uh, what do I have with Hawaiian fried rice? Yeah, so the recipe that we had originally done, uh, probably the, the biggest proponents were uh, Spam and Pineapple. Uh, so those were the big two ones. They kind, of, they kind of like come out of an inspiration of a lot of like, uh, basically a lot of Spam that I have been eating in Hawaii as a kid. Uh, so that's a good, uh, good recipe. If you're looking for it, it lives over on the YouTube channel uh, for sure. Uh, in today's recipe, we're actually leaving out that pineapple because I don't have any. It's not in my refrigerator right now. Uh, let me see if I can find that recipe. There it is.
Yeah. Elliot, how's it going? Yeah. Elliot and Rika's in the house. All right. So that's our fried rice. At this point, you could pretty much just eat it at this point. Uh, if you wanted to, that's basically fried rice. You could stop at this point. Um, what I like to do, though, is add a little bit of a sauce base to it, and it just kind of gives us a little bit more depth of flavor. Uh, and just sort of like... Uh, if you've ever had, so I guess what I, what I will say is if you've ever had a fried rice that you end up putting a lot of soy sauce on top of uh, because it's kind of bland, or if you've ever had a fried rice that you end up eating like with general sauce chicken on top or something, uh, that to me is like kind of a problem and like not very appetizing. So what I usually like to do uh, is include some sort of seasoning element to our fried rice like this. Uh, so what we're adding right now, this is a sauce base that we did earlier on the stream that's made of a couple of things, but I think the big ones are gochujang and lao gan ma. Uh, and that's going to give us this nice, really thorough level of heat. Yeah, so once again, at this point, you could also just stop right now. This is a perfectly edible fried rice. Uh, but uh, I'm going to do our last couple of steps uh, that I love including. Mostly because, well, partially because it's really tasty, uh, but also partially because I have an insane amount of leftover bacon fat right now. Uh, so I literally have like cups and cups worth of leftover bacon fat. Uh, which I would like to use up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty out my wok. So I just pulled out the fried rice. Uh, and then I'm going to add some of the bacon fat to the wok. Mm, too much bacon fat? Yeah, it should be fine. Uh, and just like we do any time that we're working with uh, wok, we're going to give that bacon fat a long yao. Yeah, so coat, wok, and bacon fat. go. Uh, and then I'm going to add the fried rice back to the wok. And we're going to sear it. Uh, and that's going to give us this nice like crispy layer of uh, rice. So everything that's touching the bottom of the wok right now uh, is going to get this nice crisp sear to it. And that's going to help us like uh, get these nice crunchy bits of rice involved which I love doing. Where's Uncle Roger when you need him? Yeah. Cool. All right. If there were some potatoes, this would basically be a breakfast. Exactly, yeah. So you could make, uh, you, could, you could basically call this a fry, uh, breakfast fried rice because it's got spam, it's got eggs. Uh, and if you just need some hash browns and you got some breakfast going. Yeah. Coming in hot, yeah, how's it going everyone? Hello. Uh, so for sears, I find that it kind of depends on how hot your wok is, uh, but I usually like to aim for a full two and a half minutes. Uh, the real key to a good solid sear uh, is that you gotta stop moving it. If you move the wok, uh, you're gonna ruin that sear. So for a full minute, for a full two minutes at a minimum, uh, usually I look for two and a half minutes. Uh, it kind of depends on how anxious I'm feeling and also whether or not I think it's burning. Uh, you got to stop moving it and that's going to give you that nice crisp sear. If you move it before then, uh, it's going to ruin, ruin the sear and you're basically not going to get anything out of it. So stop moving it, let it be, and you'll get that nice sear. Hey, there's Ham Charo. That's Ham Charo, everyone. If you haven't met Ham Charo, Ham Charo is the hamster that eats ramen every time that you feed him. Uh, he gets fed every time someone subscribes, so please do subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Hello to everyone just tuning in. My name is Wesley. This is Wu Can Cook. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, we're here on YouTube and Reddit at 6.30 PST every Monday and Thursday uh, with new recipes out over on the YouTube channel every Friday. So uh, what we're cooking through right now 
a recipe that's loosely inspired by the Hawaiian Spam and Pineapple Fried Rice uh, recipe that we did. I think that was back in like August or September or so. Uh, but really what we're doing is cooking up a bunch of leftovers. So I put a list of all of the ingredients that were in my refrigerator. Uh, over on the YouTube channel, I took a poll and had everyone tell me what you wanted to see me put into a fried rice. And that's essentially what we're throwing into it right now. Uh, with a couple of additions, but mostly a bunch of leftovers that I asked what should go into this. Uh, some people asked for bean sprouts. I was trying to figure out a way to put bean sprouts into a fried rice, but I honestly, I don't think it would work. I think uh, it would be weird. Uh, and you would have weird stringy bits in your fried rice. So. I cheated a little bit, but I think it'll be okay. All right, we're at two minutes and three seconds. So this is right around the time where I start getting a little bit anxious and wondering whether or not it's burning. But I assure you, just stop moving it. Yeah, that's nice and sweet. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. talking about so now we have all of the parts that were touching the bottom of the wok while we were searing I have all of this nice crispy rice quality to it uh, which is my favorite part about crispy fried rice uh, the last thing that we're gonna do is add our frozen veggies so today the frozen veggies that we're adding is just a little bit of frozen peas don't have very much of it left so and that should do it Uh, I, for one, am a big proponent of frozen veggies in a wok fry rice uh, because it helps keep the veggies nice and crisp. So uh, if you were to use something like canned peas, for example, uh, you would have a lot more trouble keeping those peas uh, nice and crisp because they're essentially defrosting in the wok right now. Uh, and then you could even just throw it in on top and the heat from the wok is going to cause it to defrost on its own, uh, which is nice. Hey, there's Ham Charo. Alright. I'll have to do it. So, the last thing that I love to say when we're finished cooking in our wok uh, is give it a rinse, clean it off. Uh, clean that wok while it's hot. It's nice. Got this nice non stick surface to it while it's hot. Uh, if, you try and, if you've ever tried to clean carbon steel when it cools down, uh, it's no fun. Things will start sticking to it once it cools down. Uh, you can still clean it. It's not going to be the end of the world, but you're going to have to scrub a lot more. Um, so what I always say is when you're done cooking in that wok, uh, give it a rinse, and most of this is just going to come right off uh, if it's nice and non-stick, like this wok is. I'm going to do it. Uh, last thing that I'm going to add, I also have a large quantity of leftover limes from the food booth last weekend. Uh, so I'm going to garnish it with a little bit of fresh lime juice. Uh, 
followed by the greens. <laughs> yeah, you're so hungry you shouldn't be watching this, yeah. It's okay, I watch food streams all the time when I'm hungry. There's Hamcharo, we're gonna zoom around Hamcharo. Yeah. Cool, thanks everyone. Uh, let me pull this into focus. Yeah, thanks everyone. My name is Wesley. This is Wu Can Cook. If this is your first time catching one of these streams, uh, we're here every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 6:30 PST uh, with new recipes over out, oh, out over on my YouTube channel every Friday. So uh, last Friday we came out with a recipe for a fried mochi uh, dessert, which is called a Jian Dui from Chinese dim sum. Uh, it's a essentially a rice ball that's wrapped around a sweet lotus paste. Uh, that, that, that's then coated in sesame seed, which is one of my favorite desserts uh, from when I was a kid. Uh, this Friday coming up, so as in tomorrow, we have a recipe for a beef chow, a tomato beef fun, which is a uh, tomato beef chow mein, excuse me, not chow fun, uh, which was my mom, that was actually my mom's favorite thing to order from uh, Chinese takeout when we were kids. Uh, not something that I particularly like to eat, although I do remember eating her leftovers a lot. Uh, that stuff always coming out over on the YouTube channel every Friday, so uh, if you're looking for those recipes, that's a fun place to start. Uh, this one is loosely inspired by a Hawaiian fried rice recipe that I had written. Uh, I want to say that was back in like October, or September, October, something like that. Uh, we're working our way to 4,500 subscribers by the end of the month. Uh, that's Ham Charo up on screen right now. Ham Charo is the hamster that eats ramen every time someone subscribes, so please feed Ham Charo. Uh, he's very hungry. Uh, what else? Yeah, so those recipes, they're coming out every Friday. There's also uh, a schedule of the live streams that we're going to be doing over on the YouTube channel, so uh, if you want to know what we're going to be cooking next, that's a good place to start because that schedule goes out. Uh, I want to say it's out by like a whole three weeks or so, and three weeks and change, so uh, that's a fun place to check out. Uh, if you're looking for the schedule of what we're going to be cooking next. A lot, stuff, a lot of fun stuff going on over there. Uh, what else? Yeah. Uh, this particular fried rice, the one that we just cooked up today, uh, was inspired by a bunch of things that I actually the vote on. So over on the YouTube channel, we've been taking polls uh, based off of like, what are the leftovers that are in my refrigerator? Uh, and then I've been asking people to vote on it. And then we've been taking the top five things that people vote on and then kind of cobbling together a loose recipe uh, inspired by the things that people vote on. So it's been a, uh, well, number one, it's been a fun way of like coming up with new things to cook. But also number two, it's been a fun way of figuring out how to use up the leftover stuff in my refrigerator that's going to go bad. So uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, voting for the green onions, the bell peppers, and the carrots that were going to go bad. But those probably would have gone bad by like Monday. So thank you for voting on those. So I don't have to throw them out <laughs> cool thanks everyone uh we'll be back let's see we're doing uh, tomato beef chow, chow mein coming out uh the recipe for tomato beef chow mein coming out tomorrow uh we're on youtube and then we're going to be cooking through that one live this coming monday uh at 6 30 pst right here again so uh, if you haven't checked it out that's coming up on uh, uh, monday all right thanks everyone i'll see you soon
Take out just a moth, put them back 
Thank <laughs> you.